In today's video, we are going to be using buoyancy to determine whether things will sink or float in a liquid. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to support our channel, Step by Step Science. Please subscribe, click the, click the notifications bell, leave us a nice positive comment, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to share this video. And in addition, we have made a bunch of the teaching and learning materials which you can find at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is is in the description below. Let's get started with buoyancy and sinking and floating. Now, let's just do a quick review of buoyancy and the buoyant force. The buoyant force is an upward force that is exerted by a fluid, it could be a liquid or a gas, that opposes the weight of an object that is partially or fully submerged. Now, the buoyant force is a result of the fact that at depth, at a greater depth, the pressure and therefore the force on the object increases. So it's the difference in the force between the bottom and the top of that object that results in the buoyant force. So the buoyant force, it results because the force at two is greater than the force on the surface here, one. Now this is the equation that we can use to calculate the buoyant force. It says that the buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid, in this case it could be water, times g, the acceleration due to gravity, times the volume of water that is displaced by that object. Now, we made a previous video, which you can link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video, where we showed you how to derive this equation. Now, in addition, we have Archimedes' principle, which tells us that the buoyant force is also equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced by that object. So we can use this equation to calculate the buoyant force also. The buoyant force is equal to the mass of the fluid times the acceleration due to gravity. The mass times the acceleration due to gravity is the weight of that fluid, and that means that the weight of the fluid is also equal to the buoyant force. Now, let's talk about sinking and floating. We have two objects. We have a cube of wood, which we're going to call oak, and we have a cube of copper. And we want to know when we put those cubes of copper and wood, which have sides, length, width, and height that are seven centimeters, in this beaker of water, are they going to float or are they going to sink? Now, most people know that oak is wood and that wood will float. Most people know that copper is metal and copper is going to sink. And most people know that because of the density. That's how we start out talking about floating and sinking. We know that the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Oak is 740. Copper is more than 1,000. So this is going to sink. This is less than 1,000, has a lower density, and therefore it is going to float. But we can also show how this works in sinking and floating using buoyancy and the buoyant force. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So we are going to talk about floating and sinking using buoyancy. So what we're going to say is we put that piece of co uh, co copper in that piece of oak in the, in the beaker and we submerge it in the beaker, then we know that it has a weight, which points downward, the force of gravity, and we know that it has a buoyant force, which pushes up. And we're going to compare the buoyant force and the weight to determine whether or not that object is going to float or sink. So we're going to calculate the weight, then we're going to calculate the buoyant force, compare those two, and hopefully that'll show us why this piece of oak will also float when we put it in water. Okay, to calculate the weight, we're going to use Newton's second law, which says that the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. It's the force of due to gravity, so we have the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. We don't know the mass, but we know the volume, and we know the density, so we can use the density equation to solve for the mass, and we know the density, we know the mass is equal to density times the volume, we were given the density, we can calculate the volume because we know the dimensions of the sides, so we can substitute this term into this equation, and that shows us that the weight is equal to the density, now we want to find the weight of the oak, so we have the density of the oak times its volume times the acceleration due to gravity. Now, we can put that in there, Let's plug the values in, 740 kilograms per meter cubed. The volume has sides of 7 centimeters, we've got to convert to meters, so that's 0 0.07 meters cubed, times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And that gives us a, buoyant, that gives us a weight of 2.5 newtons. 
Now we can calculate the buoyant force. This is the equation we use to calculate the buoyant force. The buoyant force comes from the water, so we have to use the density of the water, times the acceleration due to gravity, times the volume of water that's displaced. Okay? You'll notice these two equations look very similar to each other, but here we're using the weight, so we're calculating the density of water, excuse me, the density of the oak. Here we're calculating the buoyant force, so we use the density of the water. So we just plug the values in again. 1,000 times 0 0.07 cubed times 9.81, and we see that the buoyant force, when that object is fully submerged, because that's the volume that's displaced by the object, is 3.36 newtons. And you can see the buoyant force is greater than the weight, so it's going to float. So if we release it, then it will move to the surface like that and float. Now, when it floats, the displacement will not be 0 0.07, the total volume. It'll be something less than that. And that will result in the fact that the buoyant force is going to be equal to the weight. Because when it's floating, it's in equilibrium. It's not moving up or down. So those two forces have to be equal to each other. And we'll show you more about how to calculate that in the next video. Now, we did the oak. We confirmed that it's going to float because the buoyant force is greater than the weight. So now for the copper, we're going to do the same thing. We have the gravitational force. We have the buoyant force. We're pretty sure it's going to sink, and that means that the force of gravity has to be greater than the buoyant force. So the force of gravity, we're going to calculate the same way, using starting with the density equation, converting it to mass, substituting in. We're going to use the density of the copper because we want to find the weight of the copper, which is 8,900. Here is the volume cubed. And there's the acceleration due to gravity, and that results in a buoyant, excuse me, in a weight that is just about 30 newtons. Now we're going to calculate the buoyant force. Now, what do you think the buoyant force is going to be? Really, it's the same buoyant force because it's the same liquid, it's the water, the same acceleration due to gravity. Both cubes have the same volume. The sides are the same length, 7 centimeters, so the volume is going to be the same. So interestingly enough, the volume and the density are the same, so therefore we're going to get the same buoyant force, right? Which, even though it's a different material, really because the volume is the same of each, of each cube, then the buoyant forces are going to be equal to each other. And that means, in this case, that the gravitational force is greater than the buoyant force, and it's going to sink and it will move down to the bottom, like that, because the weight 30 newtons is more than the buoyant force. Okay? So that is how you can use the buoyant force and buoyancy to talk about whether things will sink or to determine whether things will sink or float. Now, let's just do a quick summary. We said that uh, for floating and sinking, the wood is going to float because the buoyant force is greater than the gravitational force. Remember, we calculated the weight. 2.5 newtons, the buoyant force is 3.36 newtons. When it floats, the volume will not be the full volume of the cube, and therefore the buoyant force and the weight will be equal to each other. We know those two forces have to be equal because the cube of oak will be sitting at the surface and not moving up or down. With the copper, we know it sinks because the weight, the force of gravity, is greater than the buoyant force. Remember that really, again, kind of comes from the density because this piece of copper has a greater density than the oak, so it has a greater weight. But the two buoyant forces were equal to each other because really they're in the same liquid and they have the same volume. So there you go. That is floating or sinking with buoyancy. Thank you so much for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please don't forget to do all of the following things. Please support our channel, Step-by-Step Step Science, by subscribing, click the notifications bell, leave us a nice positive comment, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.